Hi everyone, welcome to Bayview Kids Online. We're so happy to see you this week. We have some worship and an exciting Bible story coming right up. But before we begin, we want to invite you and your parents to learn more about Bayview Glen Church through our website, bayviewglen.org kids. We have in-person Bayview Kids services every Sunday and family events throughout the year. We'd love to have you join us. All right, let's get ready to worship and learn more about God together. by you forever I'm your friend you'll always be right here with me I'm so thankful for your love no matter what I do I know this is true Hey guys, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about gratitude while we explore the story of a guy who danced for some joy. We might even do some dancing ourselves. Uh, uh, shout out to anyone who wants to help me clean this up. Uh, uh, guys? Hey Carter, have you seen my uh, priceless gumball collection that I spent three months on? Oh my goodness! Did you say priceless? Yeah. Hey, I'm Zeke. And this is Carter. Carter. Carter! Hey, I'm Carter. Yeah, they got that. Uh, great. This week we're talking about gratitude, which is letting others know you see how they've helped you. And speaking of helping people, hey, Zeke, want to help me bust a move? I tried busting a move at school yesterday and everyone laughed, including the teacher. <sighs> Dancing is fun and really good for you. 
not so sure it's good for my self-esteem. Actually, dance is scientifically proven to help improve your mood and help your body. What does science have to do with dance? Glad you asked. Let's do it. For today's experiment, we have a couple special guests. Everybody give a round of applause for our dancers extraordinaire, Jaden and Malachi. Hey guys. Happy to be here and ready to do this. Today, Malachi and Jaden will be showing us some of the science behind dance. Yep, see, we're wearing heart monitors. Which are connected to this screen. Pretty nifty setup, right? First, our friends are gonna show us a few different dance styles so we can see how each different style creates a different result. Now, our friends are stretching here because it's really important to stretch before any kind of physical activity like dance. I'm ready to go. Just say the word. Perfect. First up, ballet. Hit it. For this song, notice how Malachi's heart rate stays pretty low. The moves are focused on big motions like bows and leg lifts. Dance can require a lot of flexibility, which is why it's always important to stretch before dancing. Bravo! Bellissimo! Grazie! Grazie! I'm up next! Great! Let's see some jazz! Notice how her heart rate speeds up with the faster music. The faster the tempo, the higher the heart rate. Your heart pumps blood, which carries oxygen throughout the body. The harder you dance, the more oxygen your body needs. That was awesome. Thank you. And now for our grand finale, hip hop, go. Notice how their heart rate is getting faster and faster. They're really moving. And they look like they're having a blast. Science shows that when we dance, our brain releases a chemical that helps improve our mood. They're great for brain health. Happier brain for a happier you. That was great. You guys are like dancing machines. I mean, I might need you guys to teach me how to dance. Thanks, man. It was fun. You're welcome. Feel free to come by the studio. We gotta go. We'll see you later. All right. See bye, guys. Wow. So, are you ready to bust a move yet? Uh, maybe later, because now it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of 2 Samuel which tells the story of David. While David was still a boy, God chose a man named Saul to rule over Israel. But Saul didn't listen to God. So God sent the prophet Samuel to anoint David as a sign that he would one day be king of Israel. After David defeated the giant Goliath, Saul chose David to lead his army. David won lots of battles. The people loved him. But Saul became jealous. He even tried to kill David. David spent years running from Saul, but during that time, even more people chose to follow David. At last, Saul was killed in battle, and David became the new king of Israel. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Oh, hey everyone, I'm Brian. Hey, get ready to boogie down, because this week's story is all about a dance sensation that rocked a nation. After David became king, he reclaimed Jerusalem and completely rebuilt the city. David fixed the walls, built a palace, the whole shebang. But something was missing, the Ark of the Covenant. This beautiful gold-covered chest held the tablets with the Ten Commandments given to Moses. The Ark represented God's home among the people. But the Ark had been captured by the Philistines and later taken to the house of Obed-Edom for a few months. Now David knew the time had come to bring it home. Gather your men. The ark must be brought to Jerusalem, for we shall hold a great celebration in honor of God. At once, my king. David traveled with the people of Israel to retrieve the ark. As soon as the religious leaders got the ark situated on its poles, the whole group set out for Jerusalem. But after only six steps with the ark, 
David started dancing before God with all his might. In fact, he danced all the way to Jerusalem, celebrating all that God had done. David partied harder than anybody else, yeah. And when he got to Jerusalem, the whole city joined in the celebration. <laughs> Trumpets blast, people danced, and later David gave out food and, and raisin cakes. Everybody had a blast. Everybody, mm, except David's wife, Michael. Michael, who was King Saul's daughter, thought David's dancing made him look weak and foolish. After the celebration, she faced him down. So you're supposed to be the king of Israel? <laughs> Look at you, dancing around like a cheap clown in front of your servants and officials. You acted like a fool. I danced to honor the Lord. He chose me instead of your father. Rude. I will celebrate to honor the Lord, and I won't stop. Those servants and officials you spoke about will honor me even if you do not. <laughs> Safe to say Michael was not convinced, but hey, David didn't back down. He used dance to celebrate all God had done for him and for the people of Israel. The end. Wow. David cared more about giving a big shout out to God than what the people thought of him. I wonder if David was a good dancer. <laughs> well, you know, the awesome thing is it doesn't really matter. He was just celebrating God. So what's our part in the story? Well, there are many ways that we can celebrate what God has done. You can dance for sure, but you can also share with others what God has done in your life. You can even use the talents that God has given you as a, as a way of celebrating. Any way you choose to celebrate God is A-OK. -okay. God loves you no matter what. But what kinds of things should we celebrate? Everything. God's given us so much food to eat, bodies so we can dance, people who love us. And we can always celebrate what God has done by sending Jesus to be our savior. But what if our way of celebrating makes us look, I don't know, goofy? Look at me, doesn't matter. <laughs> if you enjoy doing something to celebrate God, don't worry what others think. God made you just the way you are. Yeah, so sing, dance, ride a unicycle if that's your thing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think you got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Celebrate what God has done. Right, Zeke? Zeke? Zeke! Eh, oh well. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time.
time it is. It's time to hear a story full of wonder. There's so much fun we'll have learning together. So let's go down, go down to the clubhouse with Holly and his friends. Let's go down, down, down to the clubhouse where wonder never ends at the Wonder Clubhouse. I'm Peyton. My friend Jayla invited all of our neighborhood friends to join a parade of things. I thought it would be super fun to ride my scooter in the parade. So I'm going to decorate my helmet. Look at these sparkles. My friend Jasmine is coming too. Although she doesn't have a bike, she has a wheelchair. So. I'm going to make some decorations for her wheelchair for when we ride together in the parade. Jasmine can hang this on her chair. And she loves flowers, so I need to add a big sunflower. Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Peyton. Who? Who? Getting ready for a parade, are you? Ollie, I'm making decorations for my friend Jasmine's wheelchair for when we ride together in the parade. Friends are great, it's true. I know a story of two friends for you. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. It's good to see you today. I'm Aisha and welcome to my cupcake food truck. It's almost time for the parade of thanks. Do you want to see the cupcakes I've made for the parade? Ta -da! <laughs> These are my thankful friend cupcakes. Do you like them? I'm giving them to my friends at the parade because I'm thankful for them. Hey, that's what our story is about today. Friends, <laughs> if you're ready for the story, on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three, tell me a story. Today's true story from the Bible begins with two good friends named David and Jonathan. They were so thankful that God gave them such good friends. Raise your hand if you have a good friend. Yes! Friends are great. Jonathan loved his friend David, and David loved his friend Jonathan. David and Jonathan were good friends. David and Jonathan talked to each other. Who likes to talk with their friends? Raise your hand! Me too! David and Jonathan encouraged each other. Do you like to cheer for your friends? <laughs> Me too! Let's cheer for our friends together! Yay! <laughs> David and Jonathan helped each other. How do you like to help your friends? Oh, those are some good ideas. Jonathan even gave David some of his special things to show that they were such good friends. Jonathan gave David his robe, his sword, his bow, and his belt. What a good friend! Did God give us friends too? Yes! <laughs> what are some things we do with our friends? Do we play with our friends on the playground? Do we share our toys with our friends? Do we help our friends when they're feeling sad? Do we laugh with our friends? Let's say thank you, God, for our friends. Thank you, God. Jonathan and David were thankful for each other and we can thank God for our friends. Say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hooray. Thank you, God, for our friends. <laughs> Did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who can you thank for everything? I can thank God for everything. Yes, it's true. Now, let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can you thank for everything? I can thank God for everything. That's the truth, friends. See you next time. Bye. 
So there is your story, and it's all true. Jonathan and David were thankful friends, and we can say thank you, too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, Jonathan and David were such good friends. God gives us friends, and we can thank God for our friends. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good. I can't wait to show Jasmine all the decorations I made for the parade. See you next time. Bye! Always give thanks to God. Ephesians 5.20 Always give thanks to God. Ephesians 5.20